Christy accidentally or um, I didn't know that I met her like almost a year before I actually met her um, I had been kind of taken to Austin by my uh, previous marriage and got to Austin and was divorced and I spent many months you know, wondering like what I was supposed to do. Uh, and so to get my mind off of things and to get my mind off of like my, what I thought at that time, my world coming apart, which was simultaneously the same time that like Donald Trump got elected, which for, depending on which side of the equation you, you fall on, maybe your world literally was coming apart <laughs> if you were in the country. Uh, so I went to the, I, w I decided to take my camera and go street shoot the, the women's march that was going on in Austin. And uh, I didn't have like a press pass or anything. I kind of BS my way into uh, getting access. I learned a trick way back in my advertising days. So I was able to be at the front of this line with actual press photographers. And I guess Christy was a, a press photographer at that event where she was hired by someone locally to, to cover it. And uh, so I was in the front and I was framing up my shot uh, to get the start of the, the march with the big banner and everything. And I was framing up my shot and the, the cops go and the march starts and so I'm rolling video and I filmed like this 15 second clip. And for me, it was the first shot of the day. It was the very first shot of the day and it was a total throwaway. Like I never save the first shot and didn't think anything of it. And so months passed, that was January, so months passed, we were in like July and August, and my brother had helped me set up a, a dating app, and uh, Bumble, it was Bumble, because I tried another one, or he had tried another one for me, and it was just, a, it was just madness. And so... Um, well, so... Oh, goodness, I had been single for a, quite a while after being in a very long-term relationship, as we had kind of talked about the other night. And I had been, you know, sort of in the dating pool for quite a while, where it felt like an eternity um, at, at that point. And honestly, like I, um, when I met Andrew, I met Andrew through Bumble, which is a dating app. And uh, I, I, had, I had kind of given up, not really given up, but just, I was really at a place where I, I felt um, okay being alone, you know, for the first time. This, this woman came across my phone and I swiped on her because I, well, my thing was is if you didn't, if you didn't write a bio, if you didn't have a bio with your picture, if it was just a bunch of pictures, then I wasn't. I never swiped, I didn't care. You could be very attractive, but if you didn't have anything to say, I, I wasn't gonna be able to carry on with you. But yeah, I just remember thinking, you know, photographer, and I liked some of her photos. She had one of the photos with her dog. And I was like, all right, so I, you know, I swiped. I swiped right, and then like my phone did this whole like animation, like confetti and stuff, and I thought like something was wrong. 
and I handed my phone to my younger brother and I said, is, the, is it broken? Like, is it crashing or something? And he's like, no, no, that means that you matched. And, uh, you know, when I met, when we, we matched on this app and I thought he was super handsome and was excited that we matched. Like, I was like, yes, <laughs> like initially, because, uh, you know, if you've ever used something like Bumble, you know, you're just like swiping. No, 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 absolutely not. And then, you know, you occasionally run across somebody that that's attractive, obviously, but then he actually wrote something uh, personal about himself and it was quite refreshing compared to the guys holding fish <laughs> or, you know, just the sort of bro type that is very common uh, where I'm from. But, you know, he, he seemed sort of old fashioned and romantic and that came across in his profile and so I was, you know, immediately swiped right and then when we matched I was like, yes, I'm so excited. And she sent me a gif of Audrey Hepburn and I thought that that was really, that was really telling because so many people don't have an appreciation or don't know anything about old cinema. Uh, they may have seen that gif and not known who that was. And I remember questioning her to a certain extent, asking like, I'm assuming you know the reference from this gif. And then we got talking about movies and I was telling her, via text this whole time, like via text, like, yeah, I really love the movie, you know, Giant, it's one of my favorites. Uh, and love all those older older films. And and so we, we talked, gosh, we texted back and forth, not talked on the phone, no one does that anymore. But we texted back and forth on the phone, I th maybe just only like a day or two. And I was like, hey, you wanna grab some coffee? So I knew that there was maybe something different about Andrew and that possibly over the few days that we, couple of days that we, we were just messaging that he might be special and somebody that would be just a different, different from the other people that I'd been finding. Um, so yes, yeah, so we decided to meet and we'd been chatting and... We met at a cafe or coffee shop called Cenote that I mistakenly called C-Note. Um, I said, yeah, I'm at C-Note. And I, I show up early to everything because I, I, I hate when people are late and I don't ever want to be late for someone. So um, I text her, I got there, I'm like, hey, so sorry, I'm a couple minutes early. And I was like 10 or 15 minutes early, which is probably pretty pathetic. But text her, I said, hey, I'm, I'm early, you know, you want anything to drink? You want me to have something ready? And she's like, oh my God, I'm putting on my shoes. I'm leaving the house right now. But she only lived a couple minutes away. Uh, so I got her a cappuccino, two sugars. I forgot to grab a spoon. Uh, that was stupid of me, but I didn't have a spoon. Uh, I would later play this off very coolly. Um, but yeah, she, she arrived and I knew instantly that I was in trouble. He asked me what kind of coffee I would like and had it waiting for me when I showed up. And I was like, this is so nice. And I don't know, maybe that says more about like how low my bar had gotten. <laughs> Um, but it was just really pleasant, a pleasant surprise. And we just talked and talked and talked and had so much in common and closed the place down and then we went on to somewhere else and then somewhere else. And um, it just felt something different with him. And, um, I just remember thinking like, oh my God, this is like the most beautiful, beautiful woman I've ever seen. And she gets to the table, hi, you know, pleasantries and whatnot. And it just felt like we had been through this before. We had done all of this already. Um, and so there was a familiarity about it. We just kind of fell into each other very easily, very easily, very quickly. 
And it was like several months had gone by, dating, seeing each other regularly. When it came up about the Women's March, and we were talking about the Women's March, and oh, I was there, oh yeah, I was there. And she saw some of my photos from that day. She's like, oh yeah. And uh, I said, you were there, where were you? And I was in the front. And I'm like, I was in the front. We may have just passed by each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe we did, maybe we didn't. So I went to the office the next day and I was going through some of the footage and my brother was there and pulled this clip up that I'd never shown anybody. I didn't even, I've never even looked at it. But it was the one last clip that was in like a, a, a folder, you know, like a, a, just one of those non-selects, you know, just footage I wasn't gonna use. And it was the only file in this folder because it was the first shot of the day and had exposure problems, had everything. And just as I fixed the exposure, and just as everything came into focus, she passed right in front of my lens, stopped. She's the only thing in focus, took a picture, and then disappeared into the crowd. And I played that clip back on loop, and I checked the timestamp on it and everything, and, and sure enough, like I was watching that clip like a year after that moment had passed and her and I had been dating for you know several months and I showed my brother who had since met her and he said watch this and as soon as she came around I didn't tell him what he was watching and as soon as she came around into focus he hit spacebar on the on the computer and stopped the thing it was full screen and he jumped back in his seat and he's like holy shit to know that I started writing these almost two years ago. Maybe I shouldn't admit that on camera, <laughs> but I did, making little notes along the way as it came to me, tapping away at my computer, <laughs> thinking, how can I tell him what he means to me? I think I've been most nervous about this part right here. <laughs> Hoping that, that I find the right things to say. <laughs> and that, that, won't sh that won't fall short of how I feel for you. <laughs> but even last night, you set my mind at ease. Uh, something only you know how to do. <laughs> I have married you in my heart and mind a hundred times by now. While lying in bed next to you, Robinson of three floors from north of the wall, standing on South M Lamar with the traffic whizzing by. And each time I meant it, and I mean it today. These are perhaps the most important words that we will ever say to each other. To make such a promise, one that we know, both know can be easily broken. It's not easy for either of us. So instead of a promise, I will make a choice. A choice to love you every day I'm standing here because with you, I know that anything is possible. You love me like no one else has or ever will. And you watch out for me. You laugh with me. We can be silly together. We can be sexy together and everything in between. 
You are my hero in many ways. The puzzle piece that helps to complete my shortcomings. You show me love and patience and kindness every day. And you make me want to be a better person, a better lover and a better friend. You have made me see myself in new lights. You champion me in ways I never thought were possible. And just with the touch of your hand, you set my mind at ease. Oh, goodness. I know our journey will not be without hardships, but I know it will be one that is full of beautiful moments. And with you holding my hand, we can do anything. Except turn a page. Except turn a page. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Uh, so today, I marry you. <laughs> oh, goodness. I give you my heart and my life. These are yours. Know that we have met before and that we will meet again. And I will find my way to you in the next life and every life. My life and heart are yours always. I love you. I have nothing. I have absolutely nothing. I have nothing I can say to you. Nothing I can do. And that is why I find you with this book and I'm giving it back to you as a gift. Because before you is nothing. So all of the pages that would be here, I don't need anymore. <laughs> So, in this book, I promise you nothing. Nothing but to fill this life in this book with memories together. And when we fill this book, I'll get another one, and another one, and another one, until we either have all the books and there's no more paper, or until we can't write in this book anymore. I love you more than I ever thought was possible. I care for you in ways I didn't know I could. And every day, like you, I will make a choice. And I will tell you that that choice will always be you. And Katie. <laughs> and that I'm not perfect. I'm not. You know I'm not. But no one makes me want to try harder than you. And so that's all I can promise you is that I'll try. And that you will always have my level best until the day I die. I love you so much. You're my best friend. You are my partner. And you are everything that I require. And I hope that we grow old together. And we fill so many boxes. I love you too. It kind of just sparked from there. We had we've not really been apart. And well, he did have to go out of town like immediately the next day. But after that, I mean, we he got back into town and we just reconnected and um, 
spent almost every waking moment together since, and he's just, he's amazing. <laughs> and I really love him. He's so kind and patient and understanding and supportive and fun. <laughs> He's just so many things to me that I think that I didn't have for a very long time. And when you've been married before and things don't work out, you know, you just It's hard, it's hard to put yourself, your trust and faith in another person. And he just stepped right in and erased all of those fears for me. And I can't imagine being with anybody else. I can't believe I was ever with anyone else. Um, he's, he's brilliant, funny, weird <laughs> and he he tolerates my my crazy side <laughs> my weirdness just perfectly and we just fit together and complement each other and we both have had experiences in the past that I think make us appreciate each other far more than had we met maybe you know, years and years ago. And so for that, I'm, I'm very grateful. And I'm really excited to see where we go and all the things that we get to do and the, to know he will be by my side until the end. Ready? Yeah. We're done. <laughs> We're married. <laughs>